Hi again. We're painting with acrylic again. Um, and we're going to do some happy little pumpkins in some pretty colors, not your traditional oranges. More some greens, teals, and kind of off-white. And we've got our palette here. Um, I'll add in some orange in the in the supplies in case somebody really needs to do orange pumpkins. And we're still using those same two brushes that we normally use, a three quarter inch flat and a small flat. I don't know what size it is. Um, it probably tells me, but that's okay. It's small. And our water for rinsing and a paper towel. So nice, simple. Um, my little sketch is on my canvas. And we'll start with our background color, which is kind of a light gray blue. So we'll have a base of white, mostly white, I'm using my big brush. And I'll just pull out some white here, put a tiny bit of blue because the blue is very dark and will overwhelm very quickly. And just a hint of black, and I don't need to use very much of that. And I come up with a gray blue pretty quick. Might might blow it up a little more, not much. And that's up to you. You can play with your background color. You can make it whatever color you want. But to get this gray blue, I'm trying to sneak away from that black paint. Um, an extra mixing plate is handy sometimes. Let's see what we've got here. That's maybe a little bit grayer. We'll put a little more black in it. All right. I like that, and we're just going to start by cutting in around our pumpkins that are drawn out for us. And I don't know if I've mentioned this, but um, it is nice to paint the edges if you're going to hang it up without a frame. It just looks more finished that way, so I'll go ahead and paint some edges and I probably didn't mix enough so I'll keep adding to my mix so I don't run out and if it gets a little grayer a little darker a little lighter in some areas that's actually kind of interesting since we're not painting a wall, we don't need it to be just one flat, solid color. Maybe even streaking a little darker blue in intentionally here and there. A little bit, not much. Just kind of, or even a little extra white. You can kind of add that in. Give it a little interest. And as I come in between these pumpkins, I won't worry too much if I paint over the stem of my leaf, that's okay. I'll find it later when we're painting the leaf. Just kind of cut in around those marks. If you want to use your smaller brush to do this, you can. Um, as a general rule, you know, use the biggest brush you can to get the job done. And if I end up making my stem a little bit thinner than I want it to be, I can always bulk it back up when I get to those gray-brown colors. So no big deal. And as I come down, I'll kind of throw a little paint on the edge there. Um, knowing that there's a lot of this kind of dead grass or whatever, straw around the base of the pumpkins, I'm not going to worry too much about filling all that in because that's going to be a different color. So I can kind of leave it like that. And that'll be fine. So that's just a very quick, kind of get some background in there. And now we'll think about pumpkins. So I'll rinse my brush out, maybe grab this edge real fast, or slow. We don't have to be fast. We can take our time. There we go. Alright, so I'll rinse my brush out, and I think I'll start with this green pumpkin in the background. 
He's a fun color. So I have green on my plate. It's kind of a blue green and it's really dark. So what I wanna to add to that is some of this yellow ochre and some white and see if I can come up with a, a less intense, uh, warmer yellow green. Okay, so just by you know, doing about half and half, maybe even more yellow ochre than green, since it's such a dark color. And then I'll add a wee bit of white. And that is a nice green. That's pretty close. Well, actually, I think I'll add more of the yellow ochre. More, more gold, please. There we go. That really warmed up that green. Let's see what that looks like on there. That's a good green. So we've got these little uh, ridges defined with pencil lines on our pumpkin. Um, and I do want to be aware of those. So let's just kind of start by blocking in some of this color, knowing that I'm going to be doing lots of layers. Might go over that little tip of that leaf. That's okay. Just kind of cutting in and filling in right now. And I've left a little suggestion of where those little deep ridges are in the pumpkin that make it a pumpkin and not a watermelon. We could easily end up with a watermelon on this one, but we'll make it pumpkin. All right, so I'll rinse some of that out. And I think I'll uh, even use this smaller brush and I'm going to go in with some black because there's a pretty heavy line defined on these ridges. So let's take black. Let's mix it with a little bit of that green though. Let's not, let's do this. Let's just make a nice mix of that green we had mixed plus black. And let's throw that right in those little ridges or indentations. If the wet green eats up your dark color, add a little more black. Since the paint's wet, it's going to blend, which is a good thing. And while I've got this small brush, I'll come back inside these little spaces that are between the stem. Kind of get those painted in. A little more black. And I know I do have to come down, you know, right to this other pumpkin. I can't leave white space. Um, and because we want some shadow at the base of this pumpkin, which if the green's too wet, it may not work very well. I'll use some of that dark black green. And I'm just kind of following the same direction that the, uh, the ridges in the pumpkin grow. Let's kind of define that little edge there, right in front of, or right on top of that front pumpkin. What we'll do is we'll get one coat down as a base. We'll work around the canvas, give this time to dry, so that when we come back to it, we can add lights and darks without totally removing that first base coat. So that doesn't look like much yet but eventually it will, eventually it will. All right, so that's coat one. I might, the only, I have to be careful not to get lots of water in my brush since these paints are thin. I don't need to water them down. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry my brush, grab the black and go ahead and really throw some black in there. Maybe even right here on the edge of that little guy. Outline it a little bit. All right. Coat one. It's the ugly coat, but it'll get there. Let's go to our little teal pumpkin. So we've got blue and this green, or we can use this one. We'll probably use this one. It's already a teal color, but we're gonna mix it with the navy blue. And I'll go back to my big brush since I'm working in big areas. So I'll just rinse my brush out in my cup and then just kind of squeeze any excess water out with my 
paper towel, and got to have a little paint on your hand. That goes with the process. Okay, so let's say that we're going to mix about uh, three-fourths of the teal and one-fourth of the, the dark phthalo blue. Let's try that as a mix and see what happens. It's really bold. I think I'm going to dull it with a little bit of black just to knock the color down a little bit. It feels a little too intense. Yeah, that's better. Just a corner in the black. We'll gray it out a little bit, which is kind of what I'm going for. It's still pretty intense. Let's try a little more black. Oh, that was a lot of black. That's okay. What we can do is use that darker color down here at the base of our pumpkin. It's not even that much darker, really. It's a little darker, but it's better. And it's nice to have your darker coats as your base so you can add some highlight on top. Okay, so I'm just, again, thinking about not completely losing those little ridges. I could just paint my own in, um, but if you're worried about losing those shapes and not knowing which which direction they go and how to space them out, it's, it's not that big a deal to just kind of paint right up to them and leave a little space. And then over here, we're going to run into our little stem with our front pumpkin, no big deal. This might be where you want to get the smaller brush out. But I'm still gonna try using the bigger one. All right. And then I'll take my smaller brush dry it out and go back to those black defined ridges pure black it's going to mix with that ret ret wet teal not ret wet teal which is nice to kind of blend that together and there should be one about right there and then one about right there and while i've got black on my brush i may just drag a little bit of it through right down here because I want the base of the pumpkin to look like it's in shadow so I want to see a noticeably darker paint. Still early stages though. Rinse that out and go back to my pumpkin color if I have any left and just sneak some of that in there around that little stem with the smaller brush. All right. So quick and easy. Quick and easy. All right. So now this little small pumpkin, he is kind of a creamy off-white, I guess. So we'll use a white, mostly white, little yellow ochre, and a little black. And again, I'll start with small or big brush and end with a small brush. So get this guy rinsed out pretty good since he had teal. And let's see what we want to do here. We're going to use a base of the white, a little bit of yellow ochre. I can always add more of the darker color. Better to sneak up on it. Add a little bit. Add more if you need to. That's a good base. Um, and then again, just graying the color out with a hint of black. So that you, if you looked at my paintbrush, there's very, very little black on there. And it will change it pretty quickly. So that grayed it out. And now, with this color, I can probably paint right over the pencil lines and not lose them. Since it's almost white. In fact, yeah, it's, I don't have to be as careful like going around the stem. And I'll make sure I come right up to the edge of my darker colors. And 
that doesn't have much texture or interest yet, but we'll we'll get there. We may throw a little bit of yellow ochre. Just pick a little bit up, mix it into that, and then go back in and add a little, yeah, extra color there. Then I'll go to my small brush and my black. And I may even add a little bit of yellow ochre to that black just to keep it from being too, although the original painting, they're pretty dark. So we're just going to put those in. I think I pretty much just outlined it in the first one. Everything was outlined. So with that in mind, let's take the black and go ahead on all the pumpkin stems and just outline those little guys. I just thickened that one back up since I painted over part of it with my background color. And that last little stem for the front pumpkin. All right. And this is still, this is the first one we started with. It's still not really dry. So we'll work on stems for a minute. Um, and if we look at this, you can see that there's a shadow side and a light side. And the shadow side, you know, curves down towards the pumpkin. The light side is on the outside or the upside. And there's some golds in there, yellow ochres, and some black and white. So we'll start with, let's just start with the black and get a good shadow going on this side, the inside. And that, you know, you're just kind of coming in like that. And then I'll start mixing up a gray, so some white, some black, which there was already black in my brush, so that worked out great. Maybe a little more black. Don't want it to be too light. And then to warm it, I'll put a little bit of that yellow ochre in there. Okay, so that can be kind of a nice base for a stem. And again, it looks nice. It, it just looks flat, but early stages. We like layers. So it's starting, starting, not even close to finished, but starting to take shape. Um, if I wanted to add just a little bit of yellow ochre, so I dried out my brush, washed it, dried it out, go into the yellow ochre, and then just pull that through that wet gray, it's going to blend back in. You'll lose a lot of it into the gray, but that's good. It's more subtle that way. So we're just going to... Pull that through the wet paint. It'll blend it back. You do have to have a little bit of paint on your brush, though, or it won't show up at all. All right. So there's a little warmth. And then we may be able to wash brush, dry, and go to plain white and see if we can get a little highlight on the outside, which is definitely going to keep blending because the paint's wet.
that's a start on those and we'll come back and play with them a little more. Oops, I lost a little bit of my shadow pulling that gray out so I'll rinse dry and I do want to see this little shadow, that black. I'll put that back in there. Let me define that a little better again. All right. Checking this for dryness. Still, still wet. Still pulling off on my fingers. So we will put in the base of the leaf, um, which is green, like the pumpkin, but maybe a little darker green. So we won't put as much white in it. And it was a mix of the green plus the yellow ochre. And green is just a mix of yellow and blue. So the green we have on our plate right out of the bottle um, has more blue than yellow. So by mixing the yellow ochre into it, it, it moves more towards the yellow warmer greens instead of the cool greens. Oh, yeah, that's kind of not really what I want. Let's see. I want it maybe a little black again. Okay, that's better. I put more yellow ochre and a tiny bit of black, not much. And that gets me to a nice leaf green. And I'll just do a fill in just to get some color on there. Oops, I picked up some plain blue green there. It's okay. And while I'm painting a leaf, I try to remember to think about, you know, how the veins pull out from that center, uh, center what? Center, I don't know. I don't know what that's called. The line of symmetry in the leaf. How about that? And that's, again, very loose. We could go ahead and outline that. Dry your brush pull the water out of it, and then just give it a little, a little outline. There's a little extra black there I can pull. It doesn't have to be like a, in fact, it's better if it's not a perfect outline. It just looks a little more loose and painterly. If you move kind of quickly and freely, sometimes if we slow down and work real hard to follow a line, our lines end up being kind of uh, choppy and wiggly, not as confident. So moving quickly can actually work in your favor. And if I make a mistake, I know I can always paint it out. It's only paint. Now I'm just kind of streaking this black around for fun. All right. Um, we won't do the, we'll save the straw down here at the base as the last thing because it sits on top of the pumpkins. So that'll be the only place we don't get a base. We'll do it last. So now then I feel like, are you dry enough? If you have a blow dryer, that's a really handy little tool um, because you can, yeah, hurry the process. You don't have to wait and watch paint dry, which is not very exciting. Okay, so we are going to try to do a little more shadow at the base of the screen pumpkin with our big brush, and then we'll add some highlight in the top part. So we'll start back with our green that we had, which was yellow or yellow ochre, gold. It looks like gold, but it's called yellow ochre. And the green and a little black because we want this to be a shadow color. So that's pretty good. That's a very dark gray green. Let's see what that does on here. Yeah, 
maybe a little more black. And I'm starting at the base of the pumpkin and pulling up. And if you just kind of let your wrist flick off the canvas as you pull up, it will give you these nice little soft transitions. Oop, just like that. And I kind of want to, you know, have a nice dark edge against the light edge of this front pumpkin. So I'll try to get my shadow to pull into there. Now that's that's a good deep shadow, so I'll leave that, rinse out that dark, and think about how to create some highlight. So in this, if you look, um, we've got some lighter greens, we've got some golds, and we've got even white as the last layer for the lightest light. So we'll start with the lighter greens and the golds, and that means that we need yellow plus white in our green. And we should be able to use the green that was already mixed up for the pumpkin and just warm it with yellow and lighten it with white. Let's see what happens. It looks kind of gray, so maybe we want a little more green in it. If it's too gray, that means there's too much black and white in it, right? Because that's what makes gray. And so adding more of the other two colors, the yellow and the green, will get rid of some of that gray. And I'll pull that slightly down into the shadow color so that it doesn't just stop um, abruptly. You don't want to see a line that way. You want to see a transition. So this back and forth like that, you'll get more of a transition. And then I'll even go some just plain yellow. And I didn't rinse my brush first, so that plain yellow quickly picks up some green. But I just want to lightly throw some of that in there. Barely touching the brush to the canvas. This is a very, I call it, you know, whisper. Whisper the brush across the canvas. And you'll get some really pretty light touches. So now we've got a little gold in our green. Rinse, 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 pat, pat, pat. Now let's see what happens if we just play with plain white. Oh, I dripped on my canvas. There we go. Must have water on the brush. Let's see. So just, if the paint's wet, the white's gonna get eaten up because it's a light color. So I'm just dabbing the corner of my brush into the white and then pull it like so. And I can play with this. I don't, I mean, part of the fun is just seeing what you can get the paint to do. Pumpkins have ridges. Is it looking pretty pumpkin-y? We could go back to our uh, smaller brush and go back to the black and really exaggerate those shadows in the ridges. And it looks like I had a little bit of an outline around the pumpkin too, so that's all right. I can even, while I'm here, define the corner of that leaf with the black. And then I might just take a little plain black and pull it into that shadow for extra ridges. Oops. Of course, if you pull it into light paint, it's going to pick that up. Let's see what we can do here. Just a few little extra, because they have dents in them. They're not smooth. Oops, that was dark. But it'll blend out with a little back and forth. Alright, and see if I can just pull them all the way up. Light touch. Alright, I feel like that's pretty pumpkin-y. Let's move on. I can see a lot of 
some wet paint sitting there. I'm going to smooth that out. Let's move on to the teal pumpkin. And he's got just a base coat. So we're going to add shadow and light. We add a little bit of shadow down here, and it's nice and dry. Well, almost nice and dry. Close. Um, we'll go back to the big brush. And let's do a little more. We have a fairly dark shadow down there, but I'm going to add a little more. So I'll start by mixing up the teal again, which is just a mix of the navy blue or phthalo blue. Phthalo blue? Phthalo? I don't know. I know it has a P on the beginning of it that you don't say. I do know that. Okay, so let's do, oops, a little more black. Yeah, big brush, pull that up flick of the wrist so it kind of tapers off into nice little ridges or lines. Maybe pull a little of it back here behind this guy. All right, there's some good shadow. Rinse that out. And we want to do the same thing we did with the green one. So to lighten it for highlight, we can use the teal um, and add white. And then as the last touch, add plain white. So our teal is just the teal out of the bottle, plus a little bit of this blue, plus a little white. And if we need to, we'll gray it a little if we think it's too intense. Uh, let's see when I put that down on the canvas, how do I feel about that? It feels a little like I want the gray in it. So that's where a little tiny bit of black We'll just dull it. Okay, so of course, you know, if we get too much black, it'll be too dull. It's a happy, happy medium. That's better. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this into the top part of the pumpkin. And I won't go over the black, you know, ridges. Let those kind of Hang out and stay there. All right, so it's starting to get that little 3D look, you know, light to dark. If you have three values, I think I've said that before, at least three values, right? That's the, that's the minimum, your base color, your shadow color, and a highlight color. 